Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be continuing my series on ecology. I'll be taking community ecology. If you know you are new to this channel, please kindly uh, press the subscribe button and put on the notification so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. Community e ecology actually involves the study of the organization and functioning of communities. Now, if you take a look at the diagram being displayed on the board, you see different animals, different plants inhabiting the environment. Now, let's define community before we move on. Community actually comprises of population of two or more species inhabiting and interacting in a particular place or in a particular geographical location at a particular time. Now, Let's go back to the diagram being displayed on the board. You see a lot of animal species, different types of animals, plants, interacting. When I mean interacting, there's a feeding relationship and various forms of interaction, competition for resources in this environment. So that actually forms a community. Let's take a look at the community structure. When we talk about the community structure, we are talking about the species richness and the species diversity of the community. When we talk about the species richness, what is the species richness? Look at the diagram being displayed on the board. You realize that the community being displayed will have different numbers of species being present. So if you count the number of species present in the, in the environment, you are talking about the species richness of that particular community. So, in some cases, you may have the specific richness of the plant. You may have just like three different plants or species of plants being present there. While in some cases, you may have large number of species and large number of animal or species being present there. Now, let's talk about the species diversity or species diversity. This is the measure of how complex the community is. In this case, the species diversity actually is the number of the different species present, which is the species richness which is the species richness, and their relative abundance. That means the number of the different species that is present there. So both the species richness and their relative abundance, or the species evidence, actually form what we call what the species diversity. The diagram will be displayed on the board. You can decide to count the number of different species present there, both plant and animal. Then you also decide to what? Count the number of that species. Each species, you count the number of each species we present. If, for example, we have the zebra in an ecosystem, we have the lion, we have, if you count the various numbers of these species that are present there, you are talking about the species evilness. Why, if you decide to count just the number of the different type of species present, you are talking about what the species what richness. Let's take a look at the factors that actually shape or affect community what structure. And number one factor is actually the, what, the climatic fa um, uh, nature or pattern of the community. But before I talk about that, note that when we say the species is highly diverse or possess high species diversity, it means that there is large number of species in that environment and probably the number of organisms there is also large. When we talk about low species diversity, it means that the number of species present in that envi environment is actually not many in some cases, or not many, right? So climatic factor, as we know, can generally affect the abundance or the community structure, which is the species richness and what species what uh, diversity. Now let's take a look at the poles, the polar region. The diagram being displayed on the board is showing the polar region or the cold region. You realize that the number of species that are able to adapt to this environment is low because of the climatic world factors. But why in the equator or the, the region where we have enough heat, enough sunlight, and enough to sustain plants and even animals, you have high world species diversity. Then we also have the geographical location. We have some terrains, the mountain region or some kind of terrains that are difficult for certain animals to what, inhabit. We also have the, the frequency of disturbance, or what we call what disruptive event, 
or what we call the, what, the disruptive what, event. We also have the frequency of disturbance, or what we call what, the disruptive event. Let's assume that you have in those developing countries whereby you have um, people poaching animals, you have forest fire, um, bush burning occurring frequently, we have uh, forest deforestation occurring at a high rate. You are talking about what? Disruptive what? Event. These events have this tendency of what? Destroying habitat of the organism present. These are actually anthropogenic factor or mammid event. We also have the natural events such as volcano, we have tsunami and a lot of events can occur, disruptive events can occur, which can also affect the community structure. Take note that this factor that we are listing, the community structure that we are saying that these factors are actually affecting means that they affect the number of species present there, which is species richness. They also affect the number of species, the number of organisms or the number of different organisms that are present there, which is actually the word, species word, evilness. All right? The last thing that actually affects what community structure is what interaction between organisms, which I'm going to explain in details in the next uh, section of my, uh, which I'm going to explain in details as we go on. Now, let's take a look at the types of interaction or association or relationship between organism or population. Now, when we talk about interaction, various organisms that are present in the environment and these organisms, they compete for resources. They compete for resources. We have the hyena, the lion competing, competing for prey, even plants competing for sunlight. A lot of factors playing, a lot of organisms competing for what? Various resources. Now, this competition can be between organisms of the same species, just the way we have the Homo sapiens, human being competing for resources. This competition of, of, for what? Available or limited resources between or within, sorry, within the same species is called intra-specific competition. Intra-specific competition is competition with, within a particular what? Species. Why competition between different species is called what? Interspecific competition. Let's take a look at the various types of association that is what present in a community. Now, we can have what we call what? The symbiosis. We can have what we call the symbiosis. So, as I mentioned earlier, symbiosis is a close biological interaction or association between two organisms of different species. In this case, one of these can benefit, and the other one is harmed, or both can benefit, or one is benefited, the other one is unaffected. All right. So we have two types of symbiotic uh, relationship or association, and they include mutualism. Now, this sign there, the uh, positive sign here, positive sign and positive sign means that is a is an association between two organisms of different species in which both of them bene benefit. That means. The two positive signs, both of them what benefit. Why, in the case of commensalism, this is an association between a symbiotic association between organisms of different species in which one benefits, which is the positive sign, while the other one is unaffected. That is the reason why I put the zero sign. It's actually unaffected. Why, in the case of parasitism, this is an association between two organisms of different species in which one is benefiting and the other one is actually being harmed. So I will replace this with the negative sign, right? For parasitism. Let's take a look at example of um, parasitism. For example, we know that uh, the fleas on dog, the tick on the body of other animals, those are what parasitic association. Even in the case of um, commensalism, we know that the association between the shark and the ramora fish where the shark is actually unaffected, why the ramura fish actually feeds off of the crops that fall from the feeding of the shark. Parasitism, we know that the mosquito harms or the plasmodon in our body system harm us and the plasmodon itself benefit. Another parasitism, we know that the tick actually gain blood from the host animals. Even the lice, the same thing. Even mistoto, the action of mistoto on trees, on plants, those are parasitic what action they benefit from the host why the host is what harmed now in the case of mutualism the relationship between algae and fungi in that niche relationship is actually a, what a mutualistic what relationship where both of them benefit some example of 
this uh, various association is being displayed on the board. Another type of association that you should know is what amesalism, though this one is always less discussed. And it's the type of association in which between two organisms of different species, where one is actually harmed or inhibited, while the other one is basically unaffected. It's common in some plants where you see the plants actually secrete chemicals into uh, the environment where which inhibit other plants from what growing, but the plant is actually unaffected by this action. We have other types of uh, relationship that can also occur in a, in a community. You have the predation, where you have lions, the hyenas, these are the apex predators feeding on their prey, zebras and all that. So these are some of the associations that occur in a community, in, a, in an ecological community. Please um, always ask questions, always send your um, questions to biologyaccess.com and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.